Greetings, this is Father Michael with our Word of the Week Road Trip Edition. <laughs> this weekend, as we spend a little time as a community out in the hinterlands, our word is transubstantiation. Now that sounds like a mouthful. Six syllables, 18 letters to describe the mystery of how bread and wine can be transformed into the Eucharist, into Jesus' body and his blood. And to maybe set the stage, the word, although it describes the mystery, is pretty straightforward when broken down into easily digestible concepts. And the idea is simply that transubstantiation on its face value just simply means the substantial change of one thing into another. Now here, I am fixing to prepare for a little substantial change. I'm here at the wood pile. I've hewn uh, some wood here, chopped it up. We'll have an ax session perhaps, uh, maybe a little later on in the day, get these novices learn how to split wood. But what do you do? You take wood and you apply what? You apply fire. So what do we got here? Oh yeah, we've got a little fire. And you like this fire. Oh, boy. Okay, we might have to get the flint out, boys, but <laughs> you light the fire, you light the wood on fire, and what happens? Substantial change. The wood goes from being wood into what? To burning, giving light and warmth and gathering of all of the brother to share stories and have a sense of community and fraternity. And the wood then is transformed into ash. Remember on Ash Wednesday, dust to dust, ash to ash, our lives too are meant to be transformed by the presence of God. And this is done by the Eucharist, huh? And so we shouldn't be put off by a big word, transubstantiation, but simply to know that it means substantial change. One thing going from being what it is to being something completely different. And that's what the Eucharist is, not just a philosophical idea or even a great theological mystery, but the sacramental action of God in our lives. Well, what might this look like? What are some examples of this? Well, let's think about that for a moment. This weekend as a parish, we are delighted to celebrate First Holy Communion. And I can't tell you how excited our children are to receive the Lord Jesus in his body and blood, soul and divinity as he transubstantiates as he transforms bread into his body and blood. Now, a part of that preparation I often go over with the children and I hold up an unconsecrated host such as this and I say, who do we believe that this becomes? And of course they'll say, Jesus, right? And I say, well, what are those four words? Those four words are, this is my body. When I say those four words, this goes from being simply bread, flour, and water to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ himself. It was interesting this year, one of the students in the little group said, well, how is that Jesus's body? Implied in that is perhaps I can understand or see how that might be Jesus's spirit infuses into the bread or Jesus' uh, spirit takes over, but it doesn't look like Jesus's body. And how would Jesus' body get in there anyway? Well, there's an easy response for that. And it's not Jesus's physical body that he ministered in for 30 years of life. We believe that the Eucharist contains the resurrected body of our Lord Jesus, the resurrected body of Christ. Now, consider the resurrected body of Jesus that we encounter in the Gospels. There are certain properties. Think of this, for example, the resurrected body, real body, but resurrected body of Jesus is often not recognized. You can't just see Jesus in his resurrected body and know it's Jesus. Mary Magdalene, the guys on the road to Emmaus, they lived with Jesus, they knew Jesus, they ministered with Jesus, they were intimately connected to him and they didn't recognize him. They couldn't know him. So too for us, how much more, even those who know and love Jesus in our lives, we can't necessarily recognize him in this shape unless through the eyes of faith. The resurrected body is only seen by those who have faith. Again, how does Jesus indeed pass through or inhabit, if you will, take over of this shape? Well, let's face it, Jesus walks through walls in his resurrected body. He's able to be in many places 
all around Galilee from his tomb to the very next moment walking with those on the way to Emmaus to the upper room to right on the shores of Galilee. The resurrected body, Jesus can indeed be in many places just according to his will. And so once again, we can't explain how it happens, but we know from the gospels that it is possible. And in fact, Jesus did it even when he was ministering in his own life to in his resurrected body be many places all in a moment. For us then, as we receive the Eucharist this week, as we are called to join with our first communicants, we thank the Lord for his presence amongst us. And we ask ourselves this question, why does Jesus want to transform bread? Why does he want to, if you will, inhabit the sacrament? Why does he want to be within us? Well, that's the question I was asked. Now, why does Jesus give us his body and blood? Not just to be with us, but to work through us. If we look at the gospel, Jesus says, those who believe in me will do the works that I do and even greater ones than these. What's the context for this? What's well, the last supper? He's just given them his body and blood. And so he says, if you believe in me, that is, if you believe that I can transform this bread and this wine into my body and my blood, take and eat. This is my body. This is my blood. You will be able to do whatever I do. Well, we ask ourselves, what did Jesus do? Well, he taught with authority. His words and the power of the Holy Spirit transformed hearts and minds, transformed lives. So too, our words, our witness, the way we love and the way we show that love, the way we teach, discover the truth and are bold in proclaiming the gospel, this can change people's lives. Again, Jesus shows us who God is. Philip says, Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus says, if you've seen me, <laughs> you've seen the Father. When we receive the Lord Jesus, we can radiate, we can magnify, we can make presence, and present God himself. This is why I say at the end of Mass, <laughs> week after weeks, we just received Jesus. Now, let's act like it. <laughs> Let's act like it because he is within us to be shared with others. And finally, Jesus works all sorts of miracles, doesn't he? And this is staggering. The promise that Jesus says will do his works and even greater ones. Well, what, what are the miracles he works? Well, he heals those who are blind, deaf, and mute. He literally raises from the dead. And we might say, there's no more miracles these days. People don't come back from the dead. People aren't healed. You know what? <laughs> they absolutely are. As a priest, I have and can tell stories of people through sacramental and prayer who have literally been restored to full health. We have that power. We have the power of Christ himself. And for those who perhaps wonder, well, why doesn't God heal this particular person I'm praying for? We don't know God's will always. But we often think that our natural gifts and talents are the ceiling the full capacity of what God can do through us, not the case. We didn't choose God. He chose us to bear fruit. So the fruit indeed is always up to him. So as we receive the Eucharist, as we are transformed by it, it's not just the bread that is transubstantiation. It is us who are transformed as well. Let us act boldly, preaching the gospel, touching minds and hearts. Let us witness and let's act like we are those adopted sons and daughters of Christ. And let us pray big. <laughs> let us ask that the Lord continue to work his miraculous presence in our lives, in the lives of our community, by the Eucharist we receive, by the Eucharist we share with others. Amen. Amen. If you're enjoying these videos, do like, comment, subscribe. Also go to our website. May the Lord indeed radiate in your life and may we radiate the joy of the gospel here in the heart of the city.